Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of HHE Podcast, the show I'd love to change the logo again, but Simon would kill me. Um, today, I'm with Joe, and as you can see, we fired Simon for putting Chucky as the number one house at Halloween Horror Nights 32, and we brought in a podcast guru, um, the master, Nick. Um, Nick, I don't know what surname I give you these days, because I know you've got different ones on social media. Uh, yeah roberts is what i go by publicly i mean the people that need to know my surname know my surname and those that don't don't need to i guess <laughs> i guess that's okay. the easy way of doing it i'm sure but, you all recognize his name though yeah um i'm i'm quite disgusted by what i just heard actually so simon actually put tucky as his favorite house of halloween yeah. Night. <laughs> oh, yes Amazing. he did Yes, oh, I wish he was here. I would love to have had a conversation <laughs> with him. Oh, don't. him. He's just heard his first five minutes and he's already throwing stuff <laughs> at the screen of it. He's raging. <laughs> oh, dear. It's a terrible house. I don't care what. No, it's not terrible. It's just it's bang on average. Hey, Joe, mate, how are you, mate? Oh, good, mate. I'm just, yeah, just a bit tired. But... Yeah, so, guys, we're going to let Joe yeah. take control today and ask all the questions. Obviously, Nick's come on because Nick did a Simon. He did a snide. And he snuck he over did. to Halloween Orlots. And I saw him for about 32 seconds because I had to fly home that day. Yeah, I would <laughs> say it was nearer eight minutes. Do you time well, it? I'm quite particular about time, so, yeah. By the way, if anybody thinks Chucky's the best house in Halloween Horror Nights, I've been waiting to say this, you can kiss these nuts. It's not going to show. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen I've seen that. Was, is that one you picked up in Florida or did you pick that up here? I got that in Walmart. It had to be an American okay. authentic one. So it still tastes yeah. like shit and I know it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't I've not had the UK ones, but I imagine they're not much better. So they, yeah. they taste like shit. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Before I let Joe take full control of this episode, Nick, I'm just gonna ask a few questions myself and then Joe's just gonna take over. So when did you book this secret trip to Halloween Horror Nights 32? Ten days. Ten days before. So you didn't do a Simon who did it in April. And kept it secret no. from everyone. Yeah, and I mean that. Bravo, Simon. Still, mate. Well done. Great yeah. acting. Yeah. But Nick did well as well. But Nick got caught out by his wife. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I mean, look, do you want the story? Do you want the story? Of, yeah, let's of give the story quickly, quickly, yeah. yeah, go on, go on. So I've been kicking the can around on Halloween Horror Nights. Um, I was supposed to go in 2020, right? We'd booked to go in 2020 in January, and then obviously the pandemic happened, so we couldn't go um so i'd been itching to go back and and last year i was i was doing another trip at you know halloween horror nights time couldn't do both things um so this year was the first year i could like realistically um get to do it and i've been kicking the can around and the person I normally would go with would be craig um he told me very early on in the year that he would not be uh going at all so i was thinking about doing a solo trip and I was like, well, okay, well, that's good podcast content. Little did I know a few months later, um, there'd be a bit of a fallout on the podcast and I would no longer be hosting podcasts around this kind of subject. You know Can I quickly, before you go any further, Craig listens to this. I would love a podcast with you and Craig hashing this out and making it up properly. The, the thing is, I mean, all I will, all I can say on the situation, really, and this is, this is my kind of version of things, we used to talk a few times a week. We would talk a few times a week. And when I, you know, and, and like, you know, mentally, I, I kind of like checked out for a while. So I was stepping back and trying to rethink my future. And it just didn't feel right anymore. And I kind of was kind of pushed into a corner about, well, you always say you're going to do something to so do something. So I, I, I had to do something. Um, but I've not spoken to Craig since then. So since May, 
we haven't talked at all. Right. We've, Before we go any uh, further, I think you need to get in touch with him because obviously, as day when I record this, 5th of October, my nan has passed away. So life is short. And absolutely. whatever problems there's been, it can always be solved. Nick, we wanted to kill each other through COVID. And here we are talking away to each we other. Did, we didn't want to be talking. I mean, COVID was a very funny time, full stop. But no, I mean, I think the problem with you and me, um, especially Phil, is the fact that we i think we are more similar than we we realize in a lot of ways so i think it was just I've, I've uh, a party of opinion many times yeah <laughs> part, party of opinion but no i mean the, the thing is i you have to really do something bad to have a, a massive grudge for me i mean i've not talked to my parents in in over 10 years uh, they did some really bad stuff um but so that was the, the thing is, I knew that if I was going to go and do it, it was going to be solo. And I was waiting for the house announcements. Wasn't everyone waiting for the house announcements? They were mm -hmm. just very slow forthcoming. It's, it's the reason I didn't go, Nick. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, understandably, right? Because mm. at the end of the day, I mean, going to Halloween Horror Nights, you're, you're always going to have like some fun, right? You know, mm -hmm. you're going to enjoy yourself yeah. to somewhat, but you're paying a lot of money. And if you're paying a lot of money, like you wouldn't pay. Ten thousand pounds for a car, if you didn't know what the car was. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You know, if they said, "Oh, it could be a, a McLaren F1, or it could be like a full, uh, you know, ro not full Rover, a full Fiesta from like." So you're saying, but you're saying a McLaren F1 star, uh, like a Stranger Things four, or a, as you said, the four Fiesta, a Chucky house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's less yeah, than that. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do you know what I mean? Like, it's a lot of money to, to spend out without knowing what's going on. And when yeah. they did start announcing the houses, and, you know, we, we got Stranger Things Season 4. I love Season 4. Uh, then we got The Last of Us. I love both the show and the game. Um, so then I'm, I'm I'm getting itchy. I'm getting itchy. Am I, um, <laughs> I'll do it for you. I'm retiring See this. See for that. <laughs> I, I'm retiring this, but I'll do it for you guys. So eventually, my wife hey. uh <laughs> kept um you know on at me about look you said you want to go um you got a bonus at work why don't you go and i was just finding it hard to justify having that kind of trip on my own um when i was looking it was quite expensive and without the houses being announced you know it just it just kept kind of being kicked around and then she kept going on at me about it then my brother started getting on him, uh, at me about it because i kept talking to him and he said look you know if you need some help i'll help you Let's get this done. And that conversation was the Sunday. I'd booked it on the Tuesday and I went the following Friday. That's how quick it all kind of wow, happened. Nice. And in the end, um, and I've, I've, I've done my own video thing that I'm going to, I've got to edit and, and put out where I'll talk a bit more about this, but um, the actual trip, the flight and the hotel um, for the very short time that I was there, um, I got for 670. And oh, that's fantastic. Well, when I when I started looking at flights, just flights alone, um, I was looking at four or five hundred quid easy, mm -hmm. um, six if you wanted to include luggage, which I would have done. Um, and then when I was looking at hotels, you know, two, three hundred quid on top. So I was I was pricing this up at like around about a thousand pounds just for me to go without any kind of tickets. Um but six seventy I think was was actually pretty reasonable. And I that's think that's good. For, for, for a solo deal. trip, you know, I, I I think it was, and I was lucky. And also, I flew BA, and I, Phil, did you, you flew BA? That didn't week. You? Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, this might be a spoiler for another podcast. Don't know, but Ryan has just flown to Orlando. Oh, I saw um, these problems. Yeah, and and his flight never took off. Um, and BA have had a bit of uh, a troubled year i, I think it's mm. fair to say there's so, been a few problems at gal confess last week when we record this obviously um 800 flights per day because there was no staff so all off ill and this week i think there's been some strikes in the um in the tower so it's right. it's, it's been a bit it, it's been a bit of a problem and then we've had the train strikes i think the train strike was the day he was meant to fly so i do wonder if if that stopped staff getting there yeah, apparently tra trains were still going to Gatwick, but it depends on where else they weren't stopping. Yeah, but I think about sense. the staff. Because oh, the you know what I'm saying? Yeah, train, so yeah. I mean, the thing is, although there were trains running, where were they starting? Where were they ending? Yeah, if it was, yeah in between, it's not going to happen. So, so I was lucky, but I'm one of those kind of people where until 
I've got through security until the the gate is appearing on the screen and until they're letting you on the plane, I'm not really yeah. you know, I, I'm still like, okay, <coughs> something something's gonna happen. But one interesting thing that did happen with this trip, my wife noticed it. She said, You look excited to go. And Craig will tell you, P will tell you, I never get excited going on a trip until I'm basically there. Mm. Because I'm always like just overthinking everything but this time i didn't have to worry about thinking because i was only thinking for myself and like the the the, the stress was off yeah. um so it was it was interesting so that's um, question number one yes yeah right yeah so you went for four nights correct three nights four um nights? fridays uh no three uh, so three nights. I, you stayed on yeah. international drive correct what hotel uh, it was the uh, Avanti Resorts, Palms. Avanti Palms Resorts. Palms, yeah. yeah, my yeah. Hotel. I know my hotels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because when I was looking, and this was a this was a thing which I know it's not exclusive to BA, but just in general. So when I was looking, that one came up, and I'm looking on the map where it is, and I'm like, because I tried to book a Universal hotel, but that weekend they were all everything was booked out, even mm-hmm. Surfside, Dockside. Um, so I found that one. I was like, well, actually, that doesn't look too far away from those hotels. So it must be quite near to Universal. And then when I tried to actually uh, book it, um, I looked again. The only one that came up was the uh, conference, the Avanti conference, yeah, which is obviously all the way down the other end of Via Drive. Um, and in the end, I had to kind of like go in incognito mode and do it. And then it suddenly appeared again as if it was always there all along. So just a bit cheeky, but um, yeah, I mean, it was, as you said, I mean, I, I got down to you feeling what, about eight minutes? I messaged you yeah, and said, like, I'm on the way before you yeah, go. I said, yeah, my man's on his way to pick me up. Yeah. Take me home. Like, it was weird because normally I'd stay for three weeks. So I would have had plenty of time normally, but this year I only went for two weeks. Right. Yeah. And I'm, I, the thing is, I didn't even know when I booked it. I was like, I know some people are around, but I've got no idea who's still out there. Um, you know, Mr. D was out, but he wasn't in Orlando until Monday. So I didn't see Mr. D. Uh, unfortunately, um, just I ran out of time. But um, yeah, obviously, you um, obviously... Sinead had gone home. Yeah, she went home the Saturday before. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. Simon had just, left. Simon had gone home. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, the, the reason why I picked that weekend and not a later weekend was because it was the last weekend of Russia Fear. So I was like, right, you know, another way of saving cost is by being able to rush a fear rather than just buy individual tickets or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was it. It was like it was that weekend or nothing, basically. Did the um did the hotel have a resort fee? Yes. Um, I want to say it was about fifteen dollars a day. Okay. So did you pay before you went or did you pay when no. you got there? You had to pay that when you got there. And actually, that's that's an annoying thing. Not that, because it told you that in the small print. So I did see that, that you, there was a result mm, yeah. fee. But I, I waited a long time to check in when I got there. And when I finally... You know, it's that usual thing where you'll ta- everyone's taking forever and you take about three minutes to check in. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what's taking everyone so long? Yeah. But um, they said, oh, um, you need to pay the result fee. And it's like, you know, 15, whatever it is uh, a day. I said, yeah, that's fine. And then he said something else, but I didn't catch it. So I just, you know, tapped my card and it went through. And it was only later on I noticed that there'd been two transactions. And the second transaction was a fifty dollar hold fee, yeah. basically. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, a lot and, of hotels do that now. Yeah. Have you got that is, back yet? No. I have I no, stayed one I, night at the Rosen Inn and I messaged right. them saying I haven't got it back because they told me that it takes three days. And then the people online told me, oh, because you're using a European card, it can take up to 30 days to return. So yeah. I, I'm eagerly watching it because as soon as it doesn't return, I'm going to be on their case. No, that, I, I did the exact same thing yesterday. Um, I mean, I, I traveled with $20 cash and everything on my Starling card. <laughs> and um, yeah, I checked it last night and it's still there as a pending transaction. So it's been taken, but it's not in their account and it's not in my account. It's in space. Yeah, um and but but it says there like you cannot um you know unless you're claiming it as fraud you can't do anything for 30 days so i've got to wait another two weeks or so before mm. i can 
do anything. I, it, I mean, it does say like you can reach out to like the hotel, and I'm like, how long is that going to take? Like, it's, it's just an annoyance. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. it is what it is. But yeah, it's just something. To be, and the weird thing is, I don't know what the fifty dollars would have been for. They didn't do room service. Oh, um, no. it's usually just in case you break something. Right. Okay. Simple? Oh, okay. No, that, yeah. that makes more sense. That makes more sense. So now in Vegas, they use the resort fee as an excuse for, oh, you can use the pool and the Wi-Fi and all that sort of shit. Yep. Yeah. 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 But, you yeah. know, in Vegas, there's a lot, you know, the hotels, there's so much to do at the hotels. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, you kind of, it's annoying, but you're like, well, yeah, there is a lot of stuff that you do in the hotel or you can do in the hotels, mm. and their pools are insane. Um, yeah. This was a really basic... Um, I mean, have you guys stayed there before? I stayed there years ago. Okay, it was literally so... changed to the international. I went out a little nose in it for a couple of nights. Um, at first, I was in the tower, and I moved yeah. out the tower because I thought the tower was sticky. I got put yeah. poolside. Yeah, Ooh. so I was in the tower, and my review of it in in a few words is it was perfect for me. I wouldn't have been happy to have had a family holiday there. Yeah, right. the room was the room was big, um, and it had two. They said queen beds, but I'm not. I don't think they were queen beds, uh, but like two large beds. You know, big TV. Um, you know, lots of you know space. Um, I guess in the room, especially for one person. Uh, but like the, the the bathroom looked unfinished. I mean, it clearly wasn't not finished because it hadn't been modernized in a while, but. Like there was exposed pipes and mm -hmm. it just didn't, you know, it, it just wasn't great. And it felt very much like being in a motel rather than a hotel. I yeah. say, I, I, because it's got so much land. It's got a great pool though, but it's got so much land. I would love it to be knocked down and put a whole brand new hotel there. Well, yeah. just remind me whereabouts an I drive it is. Um, what's the easiest way to tell you? Um, five minutes away from my hotel near the Rosen in Universal. It's, it's, Oh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. kind of in between the world's biggest McDonald's and Surfside. Yeah, okay. Almost okay. in the middle of that. Because there is another Ravanti down near Point Orlando, isn't there? Um, yeah. Ravanti International Park. Um, I can't remember. Avanti it's Resort, I think it's called. Avanti, yeah. Avanti, um, Avanti Conference. It, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're just basic motel hotels, I call them, like Rosen Inns. They're yeah, okay yeah. to use. But when I stayed in the Rosen Inn one day, I, I, I said, I stay, I've got no problem staying here. I'd have no problem staying here with mates. I wouldn't stay here with my family. No, yeah. If that, yeah. I, I mean, it was no obviously, it was, it was like eight, eight minutes walk to like the hotel, like to your hotel, which was across the way from a, a Walgreens. So that, oh, yeah. you know, after I checked in, I literally dropped my bags off and went straight to Walgreens, got mm -hmm. some supplies to the room. What I would say as well about the room, there was a microwave, there was a fridge, um, obviously air conditioning. You know, uh, some hotels you don't even get. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, some hotels you don't even get a fridge. So, you know, to have that, you know, I was able to go to Walgreens, get some drink, get some water, you know, have knowing that I had stuff in the room when I got back from Halloween Horror Nights was was good it meant i didn't i wasn't going to come back starving or something like that yeah so. yeah would you stay there again if you went on your own yeah if i went on my own absolutely because um and i walked a few times to universal and it was probably about a, a 25 30 minute walk nice see i haven't done that walk buses. i haven't done that walk since i've moved into surfside i remember yeah, that walk very well yeah. but there's no point once you move into yeah, one you of don't them need to do you no Right, should we nice. get to Halloween Horror Nights? And Joe, yeah. this is where you're taking over, mate. Come yeah, on, Joe. Right, Nick, um, Practice. Yeah. <laughs> how many how many nights did you actually go to Horror Nights? Uh, so I went so I, I ended although I got there late, uh so I got I flew in at three o'clock local time. Um so by the time I mean, we didn't get in at three, we was due to get in at three up. It was probably about half past three. After you pull up, after you go through security, after you get your luggage, um it was probably about half past four um and then i got a a lift to the the hotel um i waited about seven minutes for the lift to turn up didn't take too long um and then after i, I checked in went to walgreens got some supplies come back freshened up uh it was about seven half seven something like that and i hadn't i knew 
I looked on the map where it was. So I knew it was like uh, a mile and a half walk, but I didn't know how else to get there. And I could see there was a bus that I could get on a Lynx bus, but I thought, okay, when's that next bus? And it was like 15 minutes. I was like, well, I'll be mm-hmm. almost there then. Yeah. So I just walked yeah. it. And it was quite nice. You know, that time of night, it's um, the sun's starting to come down. So it's still quite bright. Um, you know, it's warm. So, you know, it wasn't like you were <laughs> trying to stay out of the cold or anything. So, and yeah. I thought it was good to like, just, just do the walk for the first time. So then kind of know what it was like to do going forward. But uh, yeah, so I went to the first night I was there for about four or five hours, mm-hmm. um, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I, I didn't do stay and scream at all. So if you've got that question, uh, okay. you can get yeah, that one. Forget that I, one. Yeah. Um, but I did, like for, for the Saturday and Sunday, I was there to at least one in the morning. I think mm-hmm. half one was the latest I left. And that was just because my body was like, go home. Yeah. yeah. I was in so much pain. That I was like, no, go home. <laughs> um, but I didn't do stay and scream on the Saturday or Sunday when I could have done because on the Saturday... I knew it was going to be really busy and just thought, sod it. And I was in the parts on the Sunday and I saw people getting re- starting to get ready for Stay and Scream at half past two. And it was so hot that day. I thought, you know what? I can't just stand here for three or four hours to get a yeah. few houses done at the start of the event. So I just didn't bother. And it's the first time I've never done Stay and Scream at all. Did you have Express? I didn't have Express, but I did have Disability Pass. Okay, which yeah, one did you was... have? Because I had, we had the, the top tier one in my party. Which one did you have? Was you orange? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think that, I don't think they have tiers. I think they just do like yeah, the one. There's ones. tiers. But oh, no, there's tiers because w- with my mm. one, you um like you would go down the Express Pass, right? Correct. Yes. I didn't. I was treated like an RIP tour with the person who had it with us. We'd give it in the time like you. We'd be brought back and then we'd be took, we'd be walked around straight to the front of the queue, past all express and everything, and straight in. When did you, when did that get applied for? Well, um, Melvin, who had it, um, obviously he had to have a mobility scooter as well, and he's no good with people around him. So when all yeah. that was explained, he got the the thing with the official people. Then he did it with Universal. Once Universal asked the questions, can he stay in queues for long? And he said, um, not really, because he gets claustrophobic around people. And they went, right, you're on the top tier. Oh, it's yellow or gold, it is. And okay. um, yeah, and that was it. And, it, you know, same at SeaWorld. Um, Disney's is slightly different, but the same sort of thing. Disney, Disney have their own thing. I mean, the reason I asked that is because, um, so this was like the first time I, um, I've ever done that. And to explain why it took me about 15 minutes to answer Phil's first question. Um, I've got ADHD and autism and only got diagnosed uh, the end of last year. So this is all kind of, I mean, experiencing it is not new to me. I've had it all my life, but knowing what it is now is new to me. Um, So I'd never applied for a pass. Um, My kids would also apply for a pass, but we've not gone since they've been diagnosed with theme park either but i'd never i didn't know what universal's policy was i looked it into was, it it's brand new it was literally yes. um dropped <clears> in <throat> a few days before the uh, the general public was told so even the staff didn't know about it no so this is why it's been a bit of a cock up this year because they've been learning yeah. on the job it, i think it's, it's isn't it like the ibc ees or something or the yeah. ibc it's a loophole to get around floor of the laws basically so they can ask people about their disabilities yeah, and I know it's very controversial because I know, yeah, people don't like talking about the disabilities. Um, you know, personally, I don't, I, I don't see what the problem is. But if people do, that's that's their choice. Um, but yeah, I had to, I had to download an app. I had to upload my photo. I then had to upload documents to say um, what I have and put down my doctor's information and apparently what the process is is they're supposed to take that look at it contact you um decide yes or no and then you go to universal you talk to them and then they actually issue the the card from their point of view last for two weeks yeah Mm -hmm. yeah two weeks at a time the card so when you get approved the card lasts for a year but you can only get the pass for two weeks at a time and you've got to 
go through the whole process again. Which is well, the interesting thing really is with that pass is you can, once you've been approved by Universal as well, everyone's still going to the front guest services when you can go to any of the guest services around the park at that point and they just give it to you straight away. Right. Okay. That's yeah. interesting because I didn't, yeah, I only knew the guest services at the front. Um, so my mine got approved after about two days and I just got an email saying it's been approved and the app it said it's been approved um and then when you go to universal you just have to they ask you some questions you explain which are the questions you already answered so it's a little bit silly but whatever um and then they explain how the pass works and you get the pass and it they ask you how many people are in your party obviously it was just me um and uh and when when you're going to the parks like how many days you're going to be there for um and it's stated um and i, I mean other than that i getting it was the was the worst part just because it took yeah. so long um but you know it's my first time using it and it it really did help um mm. yeah it, it, it with the i i think the difference as well going solo i didn't have any kind of distraction where i normally would do so normally yeah. like i'd be with some people that i knew um standing in queues with people for a long time that i didn't know and also the event is just so busy it would have been it would have been really tough um i've got my own measures like i have um earplugs that i use which the first time i've ever used them um at that event and it was a game changer in my experience of the houses my enjoyment of the houses was far more than it usually is because of the difference of that the earplugs made um so all little trips tips and tricks that i learned um after getting diagnosed have, have actually helped my experience um at the parks um yeah. but i'd also gone there and i said to myself i've got three nights um i knew how busy it had been um i wasn't confident that i'd get everything done but there was only some houses i really cared about so stranger things uh the last of us um the yeti um dragons Ch uh not dragons challenge dragons Fury. Uh, jewel and dragons jewel and dragons oh about three different names for it um <laughs> they were all they were, they were the houses that i was most interested in so i decided as long as i do those over the three nights i'm happy mm -hmm. everything else was a bonus in the end i did eight out of ten houses and there was one house i had no interest in doing at all and the other house every time i tried to go uh it didn't work out because of a return time um or i was too tired to go yeah. when i could have gone so you know i you know all in all eight houses i, I was happy with that so yeah of course yeah yeah um going back to what we was asking earlier i know you didn't do stay and scream but did you go to the parks in the daytime so on the sunday on the sunday and also because my flight was um at 8 50 at night mm -hmm. i went uh, I spent the Monday in the parks as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I I had two pretty regular park days. Like uh, I know, I think Sunday I was there from about twelve till I left about six to then go back to Halloween Horror Nights uh, at eight. Um, and Monday I think I got there about ten. Yeah. And was there till about four. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, I think we're about to run out of time. So should we cut this off and then come back? Yes, and we'll yep. get really into yeah. the Halloween Horror Nights there. And uh, probably people, as you know, if you keep on listening, I'm a tight arse and refuse to pay for Zoom. Put the price down. <laughs> <laughs> right, and we are back. Right, Nick, so I think we'll probably start with the scare zones. I mean, I didn't have the luxury of going this year, but I know the boys did, Simon and Phil. And from what I saw on YouTube, I was a little bit underwhelmed with the scare zones, mate. So first, what are your thoughts, mate? You know what? Scare zones is a funny one because I always feel a little underwhelmed with scare zones in general. Like, I get what they're trying to do, but I think it's it's a hard task to do it when you're so open. And I think although there are opportunities for people to kind of like jump out at you and stuff like that, despite that i think you know it's it's hard to get them to work so i mean i think now the problem is i actually had i bought home maps and can i find them no because my wife moved them earlier um so i can't remember all the names of the scare zones but the one that 
I, you know, I do know the, the name of and was the one that I had the most fun in was uh, Vamp 69. Mm-hmm. And that's just because it was a party yeah. atmosphere. Um, yeah. You know, it was really good. What One thing that was interesting when I was there, I, when I was at the Friday or Saturday, it doesn't matter, but um, I did hear that people were saying um, that uh, some people got, I think it was their friends or something, got turned away because they'd come dressed in 60s clothing. Oh. Yeah, because of the scare actors. Yeah, I can yeah. kind of get that. If he was yeah. getting too much, yeah. I like him. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. I, I agreed. You know, I, I, I completely understood why they would uh, would they would they do something like that. Yeah, surely you'd know that before you went anyway. I mean, they have a no costume rule, right? Yeah. You know, whenever you're in a, you know, if, if you're like me and in lots of different Universal and Halloween Horror Night groups, you know, people are always like, oh, is this costume too much? It's yeah. like them in like a skimpy Chucky outfit. In all fairness, like so it, ha- <laughs> it has been very vague the last couple of years, though. So I think mm. that's been the problem. Universal, well, I think if you can be, lines. I think if you can in, in any way be confused by one of their own performers, you're not coming in. Mm. And I don't think that's unreasonable because. Yeah. The problem is, I mean, I saw no trouble this year. And it's a, and it's the first one in a while that I've not seen any trouble. The last few years, the last two times that I went, I did. Yeah, I didn't see any fights. Um, it's a good point. Didn't see any fights. Didn't see anyone vomiting in bushes or oh, passed out on the I, floor. I, I saw one person vomiting in, in a bin at Jimmy Fallon. But then again, Craig, well, that's probably what it comes to attraction. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Craig. <laughs> yeah, sorry, mate. I know, I know it's your favourite, but I, you know, it is what it is. Oh, it's dreadful. Um, it's all good. <laughs> but um, so that that was the scare zone that stood out for me the most. Um, what was the scare zone in San Francisco, Phil? Um, is that the oh god, which oh I don't know. Yeah, is it San Francisco near Harry Potter or no? Born? Well, yeah, San Francisco is um, Fast and Furious, so where Chucky was. Oh, uh, what's it called? Shipyard eighty nine or something, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I think you're right. That one, was, that one was that one was good. Um, like there was some good. Obviously, the the fan favorite uh, scare actor of the year was in that zone. Um, the uh, the bat on stilts. Oh yeah. Oh, that, that, that looked cool. Before. I must admit, that looked so cool. Yeah. 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 And Hit me off um, thirty-two. Okay. Um, but I mean, to be honest, the the best scare zone I saw this year wasn't the scare zone. Uh, it was the Megan's. If, yeah. The Megans were great. Yeah, so it's only because you had to hunt them down. <laughs> well, I didn't. That was the thing. Well, so, you see, you're just lucky. See, well, so what happened was, um, I mean, my, do- I mean, th- the hardest thing about the whole trip was my daughter. She was devastated that I was going, not because of where I was going or anything like that, just because I was going away. And she just watched the film Megan. Uh, probably the weekend before or something. She wanted to dress up as Megan for Halloween. She's going to a Halloween party. So I said, well, you should probably watch the film. Now, bad parent that I am, she is 10. But yes, quality. She, <laughs> we, she wanted to watch Stranger Things last year. And we said, well, what you can watch an episode on a Sunday morning and see how you get on with it. And we did that for a couple of weekends. And then it became like a nightly thing because she just enjoyed it so much. And she was obviously okay with the content. You know, we we tried to be responsible with it. And I'd seen Megan at the cinema. I knew it wasn't a particularly uh, violent it's film. It's not scary. It's not really no. scary either. So I, I it's, it's very tongue-in-cheek. So I thought, no, I'm sure she'll be fine with it. And so we watched it on a Sunday morning. She enjoyed it. Um, so when I told her that there was these Megans at the park, she said, what I'd like you to do is is take some video of the Megans. So I was like, okay. And what I did when I went there on the Saturday, I looked online to try and see where the Megans, I couldn't even find where the Megans were supposed to come out. It was, um, it was, it was sort of like try to keep secret when <clears throat> people started to figure it out. Yeah. Well, it was basically, it was um, across some Mel's dining yep. and um, just in front of Chucky, yep. uh, that area there. So I got there and I thought, and I, I, I saw some photos and realized where that was. So I was like, okay, so if I stay by Mel's, they might come out. I had no idea what their time frame was or anything. And I said to myself, right, I'm going to stay here. Um, I'll give it half an hour. And if I don't see anything, you know, I'll just carry on with my night. And about 10 past seven, eight, I can't even remember what time I was there, but whatever time it was, it was 10 past the hour. And I started to see these black shoes underneath the the, uh, the gates across the mills. And I thought, 
okay, that's one person. And then I saw about two or three more people. I was like, okay, I think this is where it's going to happen. And I just sat there with my my phone on my my tripod, and someone actually came over to me and said, oh, do you know when the Megans are coming out? And I'm like, sorry, mate, I don't even know if they are coming out. I said, I'm just waiting here in the hope that they do. Because I think he thought I was live streaming or something, I guess, because a lot of people uh, yeah. do. Yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> uh, probably about quarter past the hour, um, I saw a security guard come out of the side door. Um, and I was like, okay, I think it's happening. And hit record, and lo and behold, the first Megan came out. Um, and, you know, they kind of start walking over, and then, you know, one goes to the, like the, the go position and then other Megans just come out from all different places and then they start doing a little dance routine. But it was just fun. It was fun. Yeah. It was it was cool. I think because it's it's been like the uh the horror film of the year so far. Um everyone's hyped about it. Obviously it was a very um meme worthy uh film and uh right. yeah everyone had a good time. And um once they do their performance they have they allow a short queue to form to have their picture taken with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I managed to get in just before the end. And I mean, it was, I, I, I don't know how many people, I didn't count how many people were there, but like I got into the line um, and then someone else got in behind me. And then she said, right, that's, that's the end. And anyone else that came up, they were like, nope, that's it. So there must've been about 20, maybe people in front of me. Awesome. And that was it. So each performance, that's what they do. If you want to have your picture taken, you've got to get in there uh, quick. I've got to say as well, the, whoever did the casting for those girls did an amazing job. They look exactly like Megan. It, yeah, it's it's really good. I mean, I've watched the video. You know, obviously when I came back, um, I showed my daughter the video, uh, airplay it to the TV, and it looks good. It looks good. Yeah. Like they they do genuinely look good. You know, they don't all look identical, and they wouldn't do. Um, but they've yeah they've they, they just they've nailed it. They've done really well with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a it's a nice addition. It's a shame it's being done like it is and i fully expect uh, a megan house uh to be part of next year's show it's a big um, possibility for that yeah um and that would probably drag me back <laughs> so i've got a question what, what what was your worst scare zone and why was dr oddfellow's collection of horror the worst one <laughs> <laughs> is hang on is that the one in right the hollywood the no, that's one right of front. Oh. The one at Hollywood Stark Zodiac. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my God, like, what was the point of it? Really, what was the point of it? I um, when I went in there the first night, and obviously that's the first thing you encounter. I'm like, what is this? Mm-hmm. You know, the the one they did was it was it 2019 when they did the one that was based around the arcade machine. Yeah, uh, yeah, oh, was, yeah, yeah, that was an awesome. arcade. So oh, good. Uh, you know, they, they the yeah. whole area was themed and you know obviously it didn't they, work they, in the daytime though. No. Well it only worked in the No, night. but uh, you know, that's that's I mean to be honest, many scare zones don't work during yeah, the daytime yeah, true. anyway. Yeah. Um yeah. but no, of course it like at night when it when it starts to get properly dark, beautiful. Um yeah. yeah, this one just seemed like a complete waste of time. And there seemed to be at times points where they crossed over. So people from Dark yeah. Zodiac would just start walking up to the front of the park as well. So I really didn't know what was going on. It just seemed very weird. And I never saw Dr. Oddbell there at all. I saw him a few times. I saw, I, saw him on, I saw him on the stage as well. So I kind of got right. it, but it just wasn't my cup of tea. Um, yeah. We want to move on quickly to, um. let's get off these scare zones. Let's move yeah. over to the tribute stores. Which one was your mm-hmm. favorite out of the two that was there? We had Jurassic Parks one, and we obviously had the Halloween Horror Nights comic book one. Good question. Um, I think Jurassic Park, just because of how they did it. Yeah, um, I enjoyed it. I didn't mm-hmm. even know. So, again, although I'd been up Hollywood, I think because obviously at night it's closed um, and it's not lit up, I, I didn't even notice it. So it was only when I went to the park on the Sunday that I saw the tribute store, and I was like, Jesus, it's still here? <laughs> I think it shut yeah. down this weekend. Yes, yeah, I, yeah. I, I had no idea until someone pointed out that it, it just closed. Um, but I think you know because they had the things in there. I mean, I didn't have any photos taken because again, I was solo. Um, but you know, the fact you could have your picture taken on the toilet, the fact they had the kitchen sequence, the Velociraptors. It, it, it was just, it was just a yeah, really well beautiful. done shop. And it's not mm-hmm. to say that the Halloween Horror Nights one wasn't, but if you think about Halloween Horror Night tribute stores before when. You know they had Slimer and Demogorgons, yeah, and yeah. yeah, 
and this this felt like a, in regards to what they've done before it felt quite generic um it, as a shop and so you know it was cool but i remember going in there on the friday and it was it was chaos absolute chaos like you yeah. could barely move in there um i don't know what you can do about that in terms of kind of spacing it out but i also felt i mean i didn't come back with other than uh other than my freestyle cup which has made a few a few appearances um i didn't come back with any halloween horror night merchandise i do think yeah i almost come back with that actually yeah um it was I, I it was a toss-up between that or the universal retro hat and i didn't get the universal retro hat because i hate the fact it just says universal studios Mm-hmm. and not yeah. Universal Studios Florida because the sign doesn't look right. It's half done. So I, I checked it out. But I thought the, the Halloween Horror Night merchandise um, in total this year was quite poor. Yeah. I liked that Last of Us t-shirt that sold out before the event even started. Yeah, exactly. The, white um, the Groot one. The, the Groot one. one. Yeah. The Groot. The Groot. I yeah. am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. I, know, I mean, the black one obviously looks quite similar, but it didn't look as nice. So I didn't yeah. get that either. Um, I I was disappointed with the merchandise. Yeah. And I'll tell you one thing, because um, just a very quick little sidebar. Um, I had, when I, when I left in 2019, I upgraded my ticket to an annual pass expecting to go back in 2020 because i never used the pass i assumed that it was still valid and after i booked my trip i contacted universal to just say here's my card can you just confirm that you know it's still good to go and they said no it ran out in december 2020 and i was wow. like but i never used a card and they looked into it and they said oh because you upgraded from uh you know a two-week ticket they automatically started the annual yeah. pass on the yeah. day you upgraded. When, um, when I bought it, when I upgraded it, I said to him, when does this start? And he said, oh, next time you scan it. Mm, so I, I I, then yeah. took that to mean, okay, so that then starts next year when yeah. I come back and I scan my card. Yeah. So um, so I said, like, you know, I'm a bit disappointed by it. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, but um, Universal's customer service was was great. Um, I messaged them. I, I sent an email first, and after I didn't get a response, I then messaged him on Facebook. So that was the first response I, I got back was on Messenger, and she offered me tickets for my weekend. She said, "Just tell me what days you need tickets for, and I'll get them for awesome. you." Um, but then I got an email from I, I got an email response from someone else at Universal's customer service team who just said, "You know, because of the inconvenience to you, we're um, happy to give you a brand new fifteen month pass." Whenever That's you amazing. Want, just when you come back, and I was, and I, it wasn't what I was expecting. I was happy to have taken the first offer. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I I decided to take the second offer. Um. But above and beyond, you know, I you yeah. know I couldn't thank her enough. But I, you know, I just thought to myself that is as far as I'm concerned, good customer service. You know, yeah. I wasn't dishonest in what I said. I honestly thought because of what I was told that it meant my pass was valid. Um. And it wasn't. So when I went to guest services to get the disability pass, I had to get the annual pass as well. So it did take a, a bit of time, but mm-hmm. it was obviously worth it. And now it means if I do want to go back next year, um, my my annual pass will see me through Halloween Horror Nights next year as well. Yeah, awesome. Well, Phil, where did you want to go next, mate? I think we've got to get to houses, haven't we? Um, before we actually get to them, what two houses didn't you do? So we just get that we can get them out of the way. Yeah, um, it was the the Exorcist, whatever the, the new oh, Exorcist films. You called. missed a, you missed oh. a great house there. Mm. I, I I tell you why I didn't go to it, and it's because I had no interest in seeing the film. I'm going to see that tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I've, I've not been that. Obviously, Phil, you know how much I go to the cinema. I've yeah. not been to the cinema, as you can probably tell from No Walking Movies upload. Uh, in about three or four weeks, um, yeah, I have been I'm overdue. Yeah, I, I've yeah. been I've, I've been overdue a few a few. There's a few films out I want to see, but yeah, just not a time. But um, yeah, I it just I'm not a massive fan of The Exorcist. Like I think it's yeah, that, it's fine, I, but yeah. mm-hmm. I don't, it, it's it's I one don't. of the shock houses of the year. I think everyone didn't care about it before before the event. Um, right, what's yeah. your second one though? Uh, it was Doctor Rod Fellows. Oh, circus house carnival right, yeah. carnival yeah, carnival, yeah. Yeah. Uh, carnival um i don't know what it's called not told for those twisted origins i think That's okay. it. Yeah. yeah 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 and the things i did want to go 
I did want to go to that one, but so I just couldn't get it to to line up. Um, you know, I did The Last of Us and Stranger Things twice. I did all the other houses. Uh, one. Oh no, I did. I did um, Jordan Dragons twice as well. Okay, actually, while you're on okay. Jordan Dragons, what did you think of that house? Because I loved it. Si- Simon loved that one as well. Um, I just didn't have any attachment with it, and I thought it was more of a sci-fi than a horror house, so I couldn't be bothered with it. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's always a, a house that's a little bit lighter in tone, um, and that was probably the house this year. Um, you know, there were scares in it, especially when the dragon breathes smoke at you and you can't really see what's going to happen next, and then something glowing comes out of you. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I don't think it was a particularly scary house, but I thought the the sets that they did for the house were phenomenal. Like, I really felt like I was walking through castle ruins. And at the end of the day, when I'm going through a house, that's what people obviously love to be scared. I don't love to be scared. It's weird when I go to Halloween Horror Nights. I'm not going there for the scares. I'm going there for what they actually do. Um, I love looking at what they create in those in those spaces. And I thought, and I had no expectations for Jordan Dragons at all. Like I, I never went on the original attraction, so I've got no attachment to it. Um, but it surprised me just because of what they did with the uh, with the space. Okay. So um, we're, we're just before I let Joe take control here. I am going to let you, Joe, mate. Oh, you're all good, to, mate. You crack on. No, 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 this is this, like, this, this is oh, oh, that's, oh, cheers, a long mate. fucking day. Right, right. <laughs> so here, here nah, we go. No, it's, it's work, mate. <laughs> here we go, Simon. This is for you, mate. Let's get into the Chucky house. What did you think of it? Well, it was a big part of shit. <laughs> and I'll just I'll, I'll just I'll just be his place in the stat because because I can on this podcast, right? I, I don't have to, you know, it's not like my Disneyland Paris podcast like, where I, I try and tone my language down. I like, fuck it. Um Yay. look, I don't I don't <laughs> I've not seen the TV show. And the one thing that I'll say about the house is when you're queuing up, and it was one of the longest um queues that I had actually uh was chucky it seemed to be a really slow moving queue um they do a good job with the tvs of you know kind of like getting you up to speed about what the chucky series is like etc etc the problem is with them doing that is that all the gory scenes they show you on that video are then what you actually see when you're walking through the house so you're basically just seeing you know a a waxwork dummy type uh, setup of what you've just seen a video of that's not doing anything, like it's just a model. So I was like, I, I just didn't really understand the point of it. I didn't understand Giant Chucky. If someone yes! explained Giant Chucky to me, please See, let me Joe? know. <laughs> I told I, I you, just, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> no. Somewhere Simon's going to be listening to this for ages. That's oh fine. My God. <laughs> so I, I'll start a new feud. You know, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, I, I always say this with Halloween, the, the, the thing with Halloween Horror Nights or films or anything, right, is that someone's going to like them. So you're going to yep. find someone. Yep. I, I saw someone uh, on a Facebook group or a Orlando group the other day say that he thought Halloween Horror Nights was shit and he thought um, Hello Scream was, you know, oh, we the best, the best horror you, event he's ever, been, <laughs> yeah. he's ever been to. Yeah, it was and in the Because it was quiet. Because yeah. it was quiet. Yeah. And I said, I said to him, "Well, congratulations on probably being the first person to ever say that." And, yeah. Well, wait until know. we record my Hello Scream episode because I've got a lot to say <laughs> about to say. that shit show. <laughs> but the thing, so the thing is, you know, and this is the thing. Like, I'm, I'm glad that Simon went, and that was the thing that he wanted to go and see, and he was able to enjoy it as much as he yeah. he obviously did. I I went for it once, and I kind of I. Me and the people in front of me, we just went, what the fuck was that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just... to, that to him was my Ghostbusters. When right. I went through Ghostbusters, yeah. it wasn't a scary house Ghostbusters, was it? But oh, I but... came out, I come out of that three times in a row, basically, with a massive smile on my face. Yeah, and right. That's likewise. what Chucky is to Simon. And this is, and I mean, the one, the one thing, unfortunately, it's not Halloween Horror Nights, but the one thing that gave me that this weekend, uh, that weekend, was me going on Hagrid's for the first time. Right, yeah. I did not, I could feel it. I did not stop smiling from the moment mm-hmm. the bike went around the corner and shut off to the moment it pulled back into the station. How yeah. was like, you with it Velocicoaster? Gave me, huh? How was you with Velocicoaster? Right, so the thing is, uh, and I 
yeah, because I haven't talked about this publicly. So the, the night I was, when I was saying goodbye to my daughter, I slipped off the curb at my mother-in-law's and tweaked my neck and my back. And I was in so much pain. And I thought, you should have just well, gone okay. to Walmart and bought some of their super strong drugs. <laughs> right. Okay. So on that. So I thought, so first of all, I thought, okay, well, I've got a long flight. You know, if I sit up straight and everything like that, you know, that might help. No, it didn't. So when I first got in, um, I, when I went to Walgreens, I did get some drugs, um, legal drugs. I and so uh, a lot of people yeah, sit outside. Yeah, that end of our drive, so, you can probably get yeah. whatever you like. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I met. I thought I was actually going to get shot by one, so that was good that that didn't happen. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so I did. I did get some some um, painkillers, which helped, but I still wasn't convinced. And basically, it got to Sunday, and I thought, right. Even on I'm, I'm dosing up and I got a spray which worked really well, but obviously I I knew it was still hurt and I thought, right, I know if I do something like the Hulk, it could go badly wrong. Um and I was like, I was determined to do Velocicoaster and Hagrid's, and I basically said, Look, do one of them. Because I don't know. I don't wanna I don't wanna do one and it ends up you know, if I end up hurt, I end up hurt. But I basically made a choice. I thought, what's probably the safest option? Mm -hmm. uh, so it was Hagrid's. I did Hagrid's twice in the end. Um, but on the flip side of that, I also said to myself, well, if I didn't do Velocicoaster, then there's absolutely a reason I need to go back next year. Absolutely, right? yep. Yeah, there it is. So, yeah. you know, and I was gutted. Although saying that, on the Monday, when I'd been kicking the idea about, well, sh like, I'm going home now, should I just risk it? Um, it was down for most of the day. Um, was it, it is had that when the weather started getting bad as well? No, no, this was this was uh like lunchtime. Uh so the weather hadn't started to roll in or anything like that. So no, it was just there was delays on it. There were people queuing up outside to try and go on it. So um and Jurassic Park River Adventure also kept going down on the Monday for some weird reason. Like it'd be running one minute and then there'd be like ten boats, ten empty boats, and there'd be like a delay sign outside mm -hmm. and then eventually they'd open it back up again. It was all That's a bit weird on Monday, but due an upgrade oh, right. anyway, isn't it? Yeah. So let's get back to houses, Joe. Come on, mate. Take it away. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, should we get to your favourites? Let's get let's get to your top three. What are your top three starting at number Ooh. three? Oh god, that's hard. Um, what's hard? <laughs> top three. Um, <laughs> I tell you, um, I really enjoyed. I'll put Last of Us there. I'll put Last of Us there. I mm. think it was very hard to do that house. Um, you know, take a video game and turn it into a house. I think they did a good job with it. I do think they did, did a good job with it. But I think what it was lacking was Joel and Ellie. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, you see them once in the house and you see a, like a statue of them at the end. Yeah, no, apparently like, oh. Hollywood's house, they were everywhere. Yeah, I've seen Hollywood's house, um, and also there's uh, there's like some cool gunfire effects in Hollywood's one as well. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't say Hollywood's is better. I, I like you know it still had the curtain problem they usually do, um, but yeah, I, I think it was I think it was good. Um, I you know I was, I was pleased and I said I did it twice. I did think it was well done, but um, I yeah I kind of wish they'd done a little bit more, but it was good. I thought the sets were well done. Um, yeah. Awesome. Number Ooh, two. About the other two. Ooh. Ooh. Um, Darkest deal. Darkest deal. Don't you I, dare. Don't you I dare. I really, I really enjoyed Darkest deal, actually. But it's not in the top uh, three, is it? It's no. not in the top three. <laughs> no. Ooh. And I'll tell you what else is in the top three. <laughs> the monsters. I um, love monsters. Okay. But then again, it's a run through you have. If you don't get a good run through in that one, it doesn't work. Right. So there was two problems I had with, with monsters. One was still the one the run through, and the second one was was not. What I didn't like like about uh, monsters is it like the, the change from one thing to another just seemed to come out of nowhere. There seemed to be no indication was, it was I about think to change. That maybe they could have took one character out of it. I think there's maybe yeah, I don't think Jekyll, characters. Yeah, I don't think Jekyll and Hyde added much to it at no. all. Um I also didn't like the uh, the when you walked through to a bit and it was just somebody with like uh, chopsticks in their eyes or whatever it was. What was it? Was it fine? I can't. I don't know what it was. There was like a. Now. There was like a. There was somebody like sitting in a theater booth and they had like something sticking out of their eyes. Where they were dead, but it was just a model. And I was like, okay, so it's just someone's dead. I don't. It just felt like it was to fill a space rather than 
doing something smart with it. Um, By the way, did we ever get to your second favorite house? Yeah, yeah we'll get into that. I'm just saying. <laughs> <it's important. laughs> um, I think, I think it's probably Yeti. Yeah, that's good house. Okay. Yeah, Yeti Campgrounds. Um, I loved the original. Um, I love the original Yeti house. You know, I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a mix of kind of like, like this one, you know, scary, but can be, you know, there was, yeah, it, mean, there was yeah. a good mix of the two. Um, and I got some good scares in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know if it was as good. No, you know what? It wasn't as good as the first house. No, I, I said the first that. Yeti house was better, but I thought, you know, I thought they captured the, you know, being in a woodland. I thought they captured that really well. So, you know, and the costumes were good. So, yeah, I like Who came in? Who came in tree? No, my first one, Stranger Things. Stranger Things, there it is. Oh, there yeah. it okay. is. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I mean, there were things that, that bothered me about it. Um, what, the four foot Vecnas? <laughs> no not really i what i didn't like about it was the fact that considering what the, se- the season it was based on you know half of it took place in like russia yeah we should, we did a little russia bit we, just oh, a I little bit that. just a little bit especially you know, the golden part yeah yeah i mean the thing Very is like- when you've got you know you've got the vecna bit in the house um you've got you know 11 and you know that, like the creation of vecna yeah. um you know there was three big strands in that se- that season and you just ignored one completely a problem with stranger things houses in general right they always seem to miss something out that you, you they have you to though there's so much in stranger things you can't get it all in no exactly and that's why i'm not going to beat it up too much but you know i like the costumes i thought it were good i thought you know some of the scares were good i liked what they they did with um eddie um being on like the platform above you know i thought that was you know as well done as you was going to get it yeah. done um, and I like the fact that other than Hopper and Joyce, nearly everyone else was represented in that house. You know, like nearly every main character was in that house. So, yeah, it was good. I think there's only one more thing left now. Um, what are they called? The demi? What the things from Harry Potter? I forgot what their names uh, are. Oh, the Dementors. The Dement- what did you think of that? Because I thought it was rubbish. Oh, the, or the Death Eaters walking around. Yeah, um... that's it. Death no, Eaters. you know what? So I went there and, um, you know, them when you're just there in the crowd and then they suddenly start walking through, you're like, Oh, it's a bit exciting. Yeah. Um, and then they kind of like get up on the stage and do like a little bit of a, a show. I thought it was cool. Then I, they get know, their, then they get their wood out. Yep. That's it. Woods out yeah. Yeah. for the boys. And, um, <laughs> you know, it was, I, th- you know, you're not going to get much, but I thought it was a nice addition. I thought it was nice that they did something in that area. Um, because obviously they can't really do too much. So no, it, it was Ooh, fine. It was did fun. you do the show? No. Does I anyone really, do the show? No, I don't think anyone did the show. I really, they? I really wanted to do the show, but the problem was because of um, the wait times of the houses, it was you got okay. Do I go it. and see the show, or do I go and do another house? And yeah, houses won. Yeah. You know, unfortunately. It's I mean, a, if we had the old late show there, that's an easy one to go and watch because you just yeah. walk there. Yeah, 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 exactly. But yeah, I, you know, it's a long way to get in. You know, you've got to queue up quite a bit before. Then you've got to get yeah. in. Then it shows over, and you've got to get. You know, it's it's a lot of time wasted. Okay, yeah. so overall, the whole event. Let's just give us your overall thoughts of, of an event. Yeah, as an event, I mean, it wasn't as good as 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was probably on a par for me for 2017, um, and it was an event I really enjoyed then as well. Um, you know, I. I, I understand what you were saying, Joe, about the scare zones. I think, um, you know, I, I don't know what you can do to to improve that, but yeah, that they they weren't as as good in general as previous years had been. I don't think the odd fellow story was explained as well as it could have been mm-hmm. um, before the event. Um, so that was kind of like trying to. F- trying to figure stuff out as you was you was going through and it had if you don't listen to, if so you don't listen to the universal podcast you're not going to fully understand what was going yeah. on no and i mean i'm not being funny they've got enough things they've got enough avenues in order to do this stuff right um you know they've got peacock uh they've got websites they've got socials that there's avenues for them to to do like little films i, and I stuff. still don't yeah, yeah i don't understand how there's not little mini series you know when you can have an episode on 
Chuck, not Chucky, but you know, all the originals. And then we all sit there and go, oh, this is what's coming. This would be good to watch. Yeah, exactly. So that was, yeah. I mean, overall, was I glad that I made the effort to go? Yes. And that's the important thing, right? You know, if I was on here now saying, God, that was a waste of money, that'd be awful. But I don't think it was. Um, I would have liked another night. Um, I would have liked another day. Uh, in general yeah. it just you yeah. know timing wise you know i had other stuff going on it meant that i could only go for the time period that i did but i was happy with what i got what got done and you know i enjoyed the event enough that if i was able to do it next year i wouldn't heartbeat mm-hmm. fair enough well that is yeah. pretty much it then that is what we wanted um nick thanks for coming on um before Pleasure. we get into nick nick come on, just quickly advertise anything of yours or anything new you're going to be planning to start sooner or later yeah okay so uh i've got my youtube channel which i've just renamed electronic um that's gonna be where i put all my stuff aew wrestler it it probably could be one actually yeah um but that is where so i've just recorded uh, my own thoughts on uh, halloween horror nights i obviously took a lot of video when i was out there as well so i'm just at the stage now where i've got to transfer everything over and then start editing the stuff so i'm hoping that will go out uh before halloween and that will probably be about three or four episodes of that. Um, and I've got some uh, gaming content, um, playing some old retro games that will go on there. Um, and I've got some new podcast projects which are in the works, which will have nothing to do with theme parts. So the After Dark Podcast Network will be completely safe from me. Uh, I'll be no competition to them at all. But uh, yeah, that's some stuff. So if you want to go and follow that um, or on social media, you can follow me. I'll give uh, give you the links to put into the show notes. Fair enough. Awesome. And um, Joe, you got anything you want to advertise about yourself? No, nothing. I'm Let me go, go now then. <laughs> so I didn't do it the last. I didn't do it the last episode, so I'm going to get it back. People, go and check out Epic Field Vlogs on YouTube, where I go and vlog in Orlando, Florida, and Tenerife. Sometimes in the UK. Not much in the UK because I bloody ate it. Now, subscribe to me. It's bloody free. I'm growing to so keep me going up the table. I'm not. I, I'm. I don't bum the either, so that makes it better, I think, personally. Um, follow us on all socials at HHE Pod and on all podcast apps. Give us a great review so we can grow on there as well. And on YouTube, subscribe as well. Um, Nick, thanks for coming on, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, no, thanks, Nick. Thank you for inviting me on. It's been great. Well, it's been a great not having Simon talking Chucky shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I almost feel another it's invite coming. Me. And it will just be me and he'll invite, he'll he'll say like, he'll, he'll he'll invite me on saying, oh yeah, we want to do a follow-up episode. And it will just be me and Simon in a Zoom call for an hour. I'll just Just argue. Yeah. I think that'd be ratings. (laughs) Right. So, um, Joe, end this episode, mate. I'm I'm not saying be epic tonight. I can't be asked. Good night, sweet screams. (laughs) Good night, sweet screams. Be nice. Hang on, hang on. Simon, tatty bye bye. That's it. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> the moving walkway exit is approaching. Please watch your step. <laughs> <laughs>